Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of River City 93. Uh, we're three man show this week without uh, one of the you know, usual voices. Elliot is, uh, I don't know where he is. He's not here, so who cares uh, where where else he is? Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, I'm Matt. Uh, I'll be, I guess, trying to keep us in order you know, today as we go through and you know, talk about the kicker's 2 1 win over Central Valley Fuego. Uh, among other things that have popped up in the last three to four days. I think we got a lot you know, to talk about you know, today, uh, but uh, go ahead and introduce you know, the guys who are here to help me figure out what we saw late, late, late last night. Uh, Schneer, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Um, started off the game, and by the end of the first half, I was ready to go to bed. And... Uh, the, I, what kept me up was the way we started the second half. So after that, you know, getting the the, the W, but I was happy. All right, all right, and we also got Gabe here. Gabe, how, how you holding up after a late night? Hey, I'm doing well. Um, I felt like Shanier after the first half. I was I was ready to go to bed. I almost fell asleep on my couch watching the game, uh, and then my my dog proceeded to wake me up at at five thirty this morning. So, you know. Not 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 the amount of sleep I would have liked to have gotten last night, but it was it, it was worth it for the win. Absolutely, well, tra- yeah, trade you know an extra hour or two for the three points, uh, almost every day I would think. Maybe not every day, you know, but yeah, but most yeah, days. Yeah, weekend. <laughs> exactly, it help helps that uh, this is Saturday. If it was a Wednesday game, that would have would have been our uh, choices to make. Indeed, but it wasn't so. All right. Uh, so, why don't we start off? You know, talking about uh, the lineup that you know, uh, you know Darren, Mika, and Connor chose you know, for this game. Uh, as you know, uh, our good announcer friend, who we'll probably mention multiple times, you know, on this broadcast, uh, reminded us four changes you know, from uh, the midweek game in Colorado on Wednesday. Uh, Akira, you know, hopped right back, you know, into goal after you know giving uh, Will Palmquist you know a run out in his hometown. Uh, midweek, uh, Dakota, his first start back uh, since the Greenville you know, game uh, where he picked up you know, his injury. So it's great to see him you know, fully back in the team. Uh, we also saw uh, you know, Matt Bentley and Chandler Dwyer come in on the wings. Uh, you know, guys, what it, you know, looking at that first 11 you know, that you know, the uh, coaching staff chose to put out there last night, what were your uh, first reactions to seeing that? Uh, first off, that the people from FootMob and Google and whoever else need to get their story straight because all of them had uh, Chandler as one of the midfield three, which kind of threw me off. I was like, okay, you put Chandler in there, but you still got Vignoles on the left wing. I was like, there's no way that's happening. So, uh I was, um, it was, it was good to see them trying out, um, Chandler on the wing. Um, but it, it, just like, um, Elliot had posted on Twitter, I think our best bet, I, I think I would want to see us try Terzaghi up top and have, um, Belmar and Gordon as a winger to start with and bring Bentley on later on in the game. Um, I, I think Bentley is one of those players that plays so much better off the bench. But, um, I mean, apart from that, you know, well, was pretty, pretty standard. Our back four was pretty much the same back four we've seen so far, um, practically all season. Um, it was Zaka right in front of them. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on... yeah huh? Um. I, I was I was with you, Shanir. I was confused because I looked at at Fat Mob also for my uh, lineup, <laughs> and it had Neil 
up top oh. and Chandler in the midfield. Y'all got to know by now that thing is never right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, usually the, moment, the moment I thought, I was like, this isn't right. This isn't right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's um, – they, yeah, they're not they're not inside Darren's head. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I figured it would probably be Chandler up top because we had seen that once before. Um, and I was curious maybe how the experiment would go this time. Uh, I was really, I was really happy to see Dakota back in the, as a center back. I mean, as well as Chris has played recently, um, it's good to see Dakota back there just because he had been playing so well before he got injured. And so, um, I, I was really happy to see that. Um, and I, I guess it, it, it made sense because there was a midweek game, you know, you had a, like a little bit of squad rotation. Um, so Gordon, wasn't even on the bench. And so I figured, okay, this is probably why Chandler is starting on the wing and Belmar is probably minutes management for him. And so um, I, we got the win regardless. It worked out. But uh, with the way that first half went, I would like to maybe maybe not see that exact lineup the same way again. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk plenty about that. But, uh, you know, Gabe, like you mentioned, you know, no Owen Gordon uh, at all in this game. You know, uh, you know don't know if that, you know, what, you know, the reasoning or rationale is behind that yet. Uh, you know, Mr. Announcer Man did make, you know, mention of some of the, uh, you know, travel issues that the team has faced, you know, during this, you know, week. Uh, there were, you know, some, uh, you know, even, you know, slight, you know, cramping issues, you know, in Colorado. So hopefully this is, you know, purely precautionary. You know, Wayne's available, you know, moving forward because, uh, you know, I think he does bring a lot, you know, to this team. Uh, and I'd rather have him available than not available. You know, mm-hmm. And uh, for me, the other noticeable you know, piece about you know, the 18 was, uh, you know, Gabe, your namesake, Gabe Cox, you know, getting on, you know, the 18 uh, for the first time. You know, he's one of our academy guys, midfielder. Uh, you know, we've seen you know, Beckett Howell, uh, you, know, you know, play, you know, two or three times, you know, this year. I think we saw, you know, Zerbini make the bench, uh, you know, in the Open Cup game, you know, up in D.C. Uh, this is our first look. Uh, you know, potentially seeing, you know, Cox and yeah, he got, you know, we'll talk about it later, but he got, you know, himself a couple of key minutes at the end there. Oh. All right. Uh, well, you know, let's hop right into it. Uh, you know, Gabe, you kind of made reference to, uh, you know, you know, maybe not loving what you saw in the first half, but I liked what I saw that first 10 minutes, you know, of the game, uh, you know, you know, either one of you guys, you know, that first you know, 10 minutes, especially that big chance in the fourth minute, uh, you know, right there, you want to, mm-hmm. you listeners through uh that little flurry to get us you know, started and really you know i think get hopes up yeah i mean we saw um michael hornsby take a free kick from a little ways outside of the 18 um it was bouncing around pretty close to the goalkeeper's line i actually stood up for a second and was like yes and thought that thought that it had gone or that it was like about to go in um, but, uh, alas, we, we were never able to get a, a proper foot on it to, to put it past the goalkeeper. So, um, it was a good, it was, it was a good opportunity. It made me like that, that moment made me think that set pieces would probably be pretty dangerous for us throughout the game. Um, because, and sure enough, they were, uh, and Fuego just did not appear to be organized, uh, on, on their set as well as as organized as probably they would like to be um, defending set pieces. And so I, I figured a goal would maybe come later in the game from a corner or perhaps even a long throw. So um, that was an exciting moment in the game as well as there, there was a couple other moments. Um, it seemed like we, we, we saw just the same classic buildup play. Um, Simon Fitch looked dangerous, putting a couple of balls across uh, the face of the goal but their goalkeeper was um, was on top of it pretty much. Yeah, Shanir, what did you see that first uh, 10, 15 minutes uh, from the kickers in the attack? Um, well, I, I feel that first 10 minutes, I think, I don't know if it was um, uh, a reaction from the, the no-co game. Um, I think they, they decided where you we've got to come out guns blazing. Uh, we got to come out strong. We've got to, you know, put Central Valley on their heels. And they really did for those first 15 minutes. They really, 
uh, showed, you know, the kickers that we know, um, the kickers that can be dangerous in the attack, dangerous on the counter, um, pushing defenses back with our pace, with, with, with the, the, how aggressively we attack the wings. But I feel like after those first 10 minutes, it just started to peter out. And by the time we got to the 20th minute, it was, it just looked like the NOCO game all over again. Just, we were just that half second flow to every ball. Everyone seemed like they were a bit flat footed. It, it just looked sloppy from then on. And I was starting to get worried. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, for me, yeah, uh, you know, Hornsby was, you know, just everywhere on that left side, you know, especially early on. You know, felt like you know, he was getting to where he wanted to go. Uh, and, you know, Fuego had their right back like, go down, you know, seven minutes in, you know, not have, you know, to get changed out. I don't know if that actually helped. You know, it was good for us or not because you know, Hornsby was cooking him, you know, pretty you know uh, consistently, and uh, I feel like the other guy might have a had a little bit more fitness, you know, in him just uh, you know, based on <laughs> appearances alone, uh, you know, through there. So uh, there's there's that, but yeah, I think I agree with that, and you know, kind of segue you know forward that middle twenty minutes of that first half. Uh, you both mentioned you know, thinking about going to bed. Or you know, just getting put mm. to sleep. What yeah. happened there? Was there, guys? A there lot of passing, nothing. A lot of passing <laughs> from Nathan Ani out to like out wide to either Simon Fitch or or Hornsby back to Dakota, back to Ani, back to Simon Fitch. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was it was a lot of movement. They they had no way to get into the final third. Um, and if you notice, actually, in the final third, they were Fuego was heavily man marking guys. So it's just it was it looked like they they just weren't able to make runs or um, get open or find space. And so a lot of passing going on on our side of the field. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was like the you know the uh, old Simpsons episode where they're just ripping on soccer uh, with the oh you know. Passes it to the you know, defender, passes it back, passes it back to the other guy, you know, mm. and where nothing's happening. Mm. And that's kind of kind of what the attack felt like for really the whole first half after that, you know, first couple chances. Yeah. 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 And- well, it, I do feel that one of the, the bigger issues was that lack of speed of play made it that we could not put that ball into that midfield. Uh, so it was just circling around the back, trying to go from side to side to get through. But it's like at the pace we were playing, Central Valley were just able to shift and cover, shift and cover, shift and cover. And then by the time you get to the other side, they've got everything covered. And then there's no way of finding either Zaka or Suko or Neil in the middle that can then spread the play. By the time we were able to find someone like Zaka, they just have to turn around and give it right back to the defense, and we start all over again. Yeah, it felt like the idea was, all right, let's find Hornsby. And if that wasn't there, um, all right, let's reset to try to find Hornsby. (laughs) Yeah, again. Uh, (laughs) I I feel like we saw at least – it was probably exaggerated, but it felt like at least a dozen times where you saw Alani try to make that – long diagonal pass, you know, up to the wing, you know, like we saw so often, uh, you know, last year. Uh, and uh, most of the time they got to where they wanted to go, but uh, they looked, looked awkward, you know, quite a bit yeah. too. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, if we, you know, grew into the game, they, they were ripping a lot of, you know, shots from, you know, 25 yards out that the really didn't have anything to do, you know, with uh, until they got a much better, better shot around the 41st minute. Uh, and by that, I mean, they scored. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was pretty unfortunate because um, the player who assisted the goal for Central Valley was being, was being marked, was being bodied and got the pass off anyway, which I mean, that that's going to happen. He found some space and he made the pass, but then he, the guy he passed it to was wide open, um, and it looked like 
uh, excuse me, Carrera was was wide open. Um, it looked I, I couldn't I couldn't tell, and I, I'm hesitant to be uh, a little extra critical, but it looked like that might have been Dakota's man that um, that should have. And I think maybe Dakota should have should have gotten there a little a little bit quicker because you saw kind of Dakota get on him as soon as as soon as uh, Carrera received the ball, and so. Um, not exactly sure what happened. If it was just a lapse in judgment, if you know they're asleep back there for a moment, um, things like that happened. But it, w- it was a bummer. But I also, I mean, Matt, we talked about this before the show started. I felt like a goal was coming from from Central Valley um, throughout the you know that second half of the first half. They, they were they were threatening. Yeah, Shanir, your, your actual proper yeah. soccer coach. What did what did you see? You know, happen. Uh, to the kickers on that goal, it it was the curse of the late run. Um, Career came into the box late, and I think everyone had already as as uh, I think it was Lima who who was gunning down that wing and and found his way past uh, who was it was it Pitch? Uh, yeah, I, I think Simon uh, and. Um, that late run from Carrera, I think, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think that was, that was Dakota's man. I think that was Daka's man to Mark okay. coming in deep from, from the midfield. And Zaka, I guess, did not track him into the box because I think they, the guys who are in the box were already in the box and all of a sudden the late run comes in. And that, that is one of the most annoying <laughs> One of the most annoying things about defending is, especially on set pieces or any kind of cross, that late run always gets you. Always, you know, it, it, it's really hard when you've got everything set up. It's okay, he's marking him, he's marking that space, he's marking him, and he's marking this space. And all of a sudden, some random guy comes flying into the box and it's like, wait, who's got him? <laughs> and by the time you figure out if someone's supposed to get him, it's too late. In fact, I, I think... In, Taking it way back, one of the most memorable kickers' goals that for me um, was um, was scored that way. It was a, a cross coming in. I forgot who crossed it in. It was, I think it was Alex Lee and Jason Yisley just came out of nowhere, came flying into the box late. Everyone was marking Delhi and and some of the other guys that were in there, and Jason Yisley just comes flying in with a volley completely wide open yeah so it's it's one of the i think the other frustrating part about that goal is uh you know at at the time that uh i think it was partita that actually you know got the cross off it looked like okay yeah it looked like the worst version of uh zonal marking on a corner kick you could imagine because you know if you just freeze frame it right there you can see career at the top of the six and you know, Alani's you know kind of fronting him. Dakota's you know behind him. You know, maybe was Zaka you know, further up, but there's nobody you know within you know arms length of him, uh, and it's just frustrating to see a guy you know yeah a score you know, from six yards out, but score and get two touches you know, from six yards out. Like he was able to you know, yeah. trap the ball and you know turn it you know clean from that close into goal and. You know, it's, just, it's not the optically not a great look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah. And that's why I like, like you were saying, Shanir, it, it very well, it very well could have been Zaka's man, perhaps. That's why I wanted to hesitate to, to criticize, you know, Dakota because Dakota, you know, pre injury and, and really through a lot of this game played, played pretty well. And so, um, yeah, I didn't want to give him too much too much flack for something that I wasn't entirely sure he deserves. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that pretty much gets us, you know, to halftime there, down one nothing. Uh, you know, I know I was not exactly feeling positive at that moment, uh, just because it it felt like you know a lot of uh, you know the same old you know version of bad kickers you know games where yeah yeah. You know, not necessarily looking bad, but not looking good either. And when you're down a goal, you know, that's not a great you know, spot to be in. You know, uh, but, you know, they come out uh, and they come out pretty hot. 
you know, in the, in the second half, no changes, uh, you know, coming at halftime, which I was surprised about because I thought we might see Belmar right from the jump. I thought uh, we might see, uh, you know, Gamero, you know, right from the jump. But, I don't know, you know, they rolled out the same 11 and uh, got rewarded. You know, so it's, we're, what, about four or five minutes into the half, and uh, miracle of all miracles, the kickers get a penalty. <laughs> First one all year. <laughs> yeah. First, first one called. I know, right? So all, <laughs> all year. First league one. We got we, we got one other one, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yep. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to talk about that penalty for a minute. I mean, yeah, let's talk about this one. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, that's right. Terzaghi um, just absolutely buried it in a perfect, perfect spot. Um, there's another penalty that I don't want to discuss too much that just did, he, he clearly learned. He clearly learned from his past one um, and, and and buried this one in the corner. Um, goalkeeper actually, it looked like he guessed the wrong way. And so, um, yeah, really, really well taken. I was, sir, I was, I was nervous before, before I had, I don't know about you guys. Yeah. And you know, not only that, Emmy, yeah. Emmy won the penalty, you know, too. So he, you know, he was the one that got, uh, you know, chopped down, like on the very edge of the box. Yeah, I would be, I would definitely be curious to see the VAR of that. If there was in the USL you, League one. In no way in hell that stadium has VAR set up. <laughs> yeah, no, there is no way. Oh, goodness. I think, I think part of what was making me nod off in the first half was that camera angle. It was atrocious. <laughs> To be fair, definitely not the worst one in the league. Probably not even bottom two or three. No, we've seen worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Terzaghi, Terzaghi got himself in a dangerous area, though, um, which is something we were we were hoping to see a little bit more of. He was in a dangerous position to have, like he had the ball in a dangerous area, or was it about, had the ball in a dangerous area? Um, yeah, he was definitely dribbling away from the danger area. Fair um, enough. But- yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was one of the it was one of those situations. I think the ball was chipped over to him, and taking that touch out into space, he literally just got one touch on the ball out, and then he was just clipped from behind. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the, the the pass in itself, I think, is where the danger was the pass to him because that pass, I think, it took li- literally their whole midfield defensive line that was literally parked on the 18 completely out of the game. And so one of those guys literally had to turn around and chop him down. Yeah. And I thought we saw, uh, Emmy, you know, shading a lot wider, you know, this game you know, than he you know, has, you know, previously, you know, get, working his way out to the wings. I've you know, noticed a couple of times in the second half as well, that you know, he was you know, the guy chasing the ball into the corner. And, you know, uh, I know at one point there was a time where he actually, you know, you know, try actually might have actually beat somebody along the end line, uh, you know, to be able to you know, you know, serve a ball in. Uh, so I, I don't know if that was intentional or that's him just trying to find the game a little bit more. But you know, he definitely seemed uh, more active outside of that central channel that uh, you know he you know, usually you know, sets up his home in. All right. Uh, yeah. So we talked. You know. So you know, Emmy, you know, kind of our key guy, you know, on the front end, you know, of the lineup. Uh, you know, came up big for us. Uh, guy in the other end of the lineup, uh, also came up really big for us. You know, Akira, uh, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the show over the years. You know, usually don't ask too much of him in terms of challenging, we usually ask for that one big save game. And you know, he came up, you know, with that Saturday night, you know, with the it's not going to win save of the week, I bet, because it's not like a flashy, big diving save. But I'd argue that's probably one of the actual better saves you'll see. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He, was, he was brilliant all night. Stood on his head. Um, that one on one chance, pretty much right after we scored, I was like, "Crap, we're about to go down two one!" Like immediately, um, he was he was great because Fuego was cooking. Uh, down the wings, like they they had some fast guys that were moving, and I mean we saw a lot of that in the first half, saw some of that in the second half. They had some speed, and they looked dangerous at times. And so, Akira was fantastic last night. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, the, one we didn't talk about was um, in the first half, too. Um, he actually got to do, they actually had a point blank uh, yeah. shot, like probably, probably about eight or nine yards out, like literally right in front of the doorstep. And it wasn't straight at him. Lakira gets down to his right really quickly to swallow it up. And I mean, he definitely showed out. And of course, he had a lot of other saves that were not that did not look flashy, but those were the saves that actually showed uh, Akira's medal. Uh, it showed how how good he is at, you know, at being in the right place. Uh, there were so many shots that, they, that, that um, Central Valley, I think they had probably three other shots with that, were, that looked like they were straight at him. But it's because of his positioning, because of his know-how, knowing how to how to to face up shooters and move his feet and get behind the ball that it always looked like he was just right behind where the shot was and then to come out with that really big one-on-one save against lima just came out big and just just made his body big comes off of his shin and what's even crazier is after coming off of his shin it comes bounces back out hits off of i think arms and comes back towards him and he's able on the ground to just reach over and grab the ball and smother it. So great, yeah. great job by Akira last night. Absolutely. Big time clutch save. Little trouble that, you know, once again, you know, guy just broke through and ran straight down the gut, you know, uh, you know, pretty much undetected, you know, for 40, 50 yards. You know, we saw, uh, that a couple times in you know the Noco game, we saw that the you know Tormenta game, you know as, you know as well. So I'm, I'm not loving that trend of those kind of chances you know, popping up you know for the opposition. But uh, thankfully, you know Akira was able to uh, you know bail out you know the defenders on this occasion. Uh, uh, th- just to to talk about that because I saw the same, but like, like you said, there, there were a couple of situations in the NOCO game where that happened. I think teams are starting to, um, to capitalize on Hornsby being more of an attacking left back. And when he is further up the field, taking part in the attack, I don't think we are doing a very good job of shifting to a back three while he's up there. And that's what's opening up that space on their right side, our left. And that, I think that's what, what gave uh, Lemus that opening to just barrel down. Um, he, just, he, just, he just took that space. And you could see that Dakota had to move from a central position to move towards him to try and get to him. So to, to the, looking, looking at that, I think there, there needs to be some kind of, I don't know if maybe... Uh, Zaka would need to drop drop deep whenever Hornsby goes up to create to still have a back four, or if we just need to switch to a back three and have Dakota and 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 Ani shift a little more to create a little bit more closure on that left side. But that's the second team that we've come against that tried to capitalize on that space in behind Hornsby. Absolutely, absolutely. So somewhere along the way, I don't really remember when. Uh, we, we did see some changes. Maybe we saw Belmar come in the game. We saw you know Zhao come in the game. We saw uh, you know, Meacham come in the game you know, you know, for Simon. Uh, can't remember the, you know what the sequencing is now, but you know at some point you know Cole comes in for Hornsby, you know, you know too. Uh, but you know bring that up, you be able to lead right into the happy moment of the day. You know uh, where you know, the team goes up you know two one. Emiliano Terzaghi his first uh, embrace of the season. And you know, this was, you know, one of the you know, typ- typical Emmy outstanding, you know, goals, uh, you know, where look good. Yeah. I mean, you maybe kind of made some allusions to this early on. You know, want to go ahead and yeah. uh, walk through. Yeah. We, we did a little bit of foreshadowing on the front end, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a Nathan long throw, Nathan Ani long throw. Which, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when whenever I see like a long throw, I'm not 
I'm not like for me, that's a pretty low percentage goal scoring. I, I don't know how often I've seen that happen um, at the professional level anyway. So I'm not thinking like too much of it, but I do like, I am thinking in the back of my mind, Oh, well like set pieces, Fuego has been bad. They've not been well organized. Maybe, maybe we, maybe we see a goal here. Um, and I was just, I was just so stoked to see Emmy like doing what we've been hoping he would do, you know, at this point of the year and finding, finding space and finding the ball um, in the right area and actually finishing um, and the finish was was fantastic. I mean, he roofed it, and uh, yeah, he he looked good. I, I'm 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 looking forward to seeing more of that throughout the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> the qual the quality of, of that finish was was phenomenal. But you know, the first touch to set the ball and the volley to just roof the ball, but no chance, no chance from the goalkeeper. Um, even though we don't, you don't get a lot of goals scored from those long throws. A lot of people think that you know those long throws is basically like a corner kick. It, it, it's not really because it's a, for a, especially for the defense team. It's a lot more awkward. Uh, yeah. The way that ball loops into the box, it's it, it's really 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 awkward to defend against. And usually, whenever you do get a goal from a a um, a long throw, it usually comes from the second or third, you know, second or third touch. Uh, it'll usually be, you know, someone awkwardly tries to head the ball out. But since there isn't really a lot of pace going on the ball, you're not really heading it that far. If you, especially if you're clearing it, you're not really getting a lot of power behind that clearing. So it puts the ball like in an opportune spot for the other team. And you've got a lot of coaches that are now able to look at analytics and find out where those high percentage spots are around the field. And they make sure they get a player there. Um, one who's really, really famous for it is Sam Allardyce. He, he just places his players in the right place for those, the second ball or the third ball. And I, in this situation, that's kind of what, what, what happened with, that first touch on the ball off the, off the long throw, it's like, it's just awkward and acute and not a key. I mean, it's just in the right place and just sitting right where he needs to be receives the ball, but it completes with that volley and just awesome. Yeah. I think a lot of credit has to go to uh, Carlton Belmar there for being able to get his body in a position to get a good flick on uh, and, you know, not just yeah. the top one, but actually, uh, you know, put a, enough on it that it gets all the way through and, you know, Emmy's able to take his touch and kind of just sidewind it, you know, into the net at that point. And, you know, uh, celebrations begin. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. celebrations not did not last long, uh, you know, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, potentially big moment. Who knows? Could be a season-changing moment. It comes up, you know, 79th minute. Uh, Shanir, I know you have a little bit of a different perspective than I do. I don't know what Gabe's perspective is on this at all yet. Uh, but, you know, Shanir, you want to walk us through what you saw happen on this play? Um, well, for a change, Central Valley uh, target the left side of the field. Um, they come down that left side, our right. And uh, it's a nice slotted ball through to Forbes who takes the first touch. The touch is a little heavy. And again, just like when, Emus, uh, when, when Lima uh, had that breakaway, Akira comes out big and fast and jumps on top of that ball. Now, Ford, after his first touch, is trying to turn on another, to put, put on another turn of pace to get to that bad touch so he can maybe poke it past Akira. And um, from, from what I saw, when Akira gets his hands on that ball, I think Forbes immediately then realizes this one's a goner and immediately sets himself to jump over Akira because there's no way he's stopping. He's going full speed. If he tries to stop, he can end up seriously hurting both him and Akira. So he tries to jump. Now, I'm looking at the time that this happens. This is like the 80th minute. And this game, especially this half, has been pretty high intensity. 
and you're looking at a situation where I think Forbes just misjudges the jump and his leading foot, this is what lets me know that this wasn't intentional, the leading foot that he's trying to step over Akira's head with does not judge how far forward Akira has come and his shin just smashes into Akira's head as he's trying to jump over him. So in my opinion, I'm really, I like my first reaction was extreme worry for Akira because I saw the impact and I was like, oh, that is not good. But my immediate reaction when the ref runs to him with the red card was, no, that shouldn't be. Uh, even as a Kickers fan, I do feel that Forbes is hard done by in this situation. There is no attempt to injure Akira. He had every right to go for that ball. And when he realizes it's no longer an opportunity, he actually attempts to avoid the contact. And in attempting to avoid the contact, he accidentally clips uh, Akira in the forehead with his shin. Okay, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, Shanir, I I half agree with you in the sense that um, it looked accidental. Like I don't think I don't think it was it was on purpose that he that he kicked Akira in the head. Um, however, I would disagree with you in the sense that I think it was it was deserving of a red card um, because even though it was accidental, it happened. Um, it was a dangerous play. It I mean, and that and you know some sometimes that's just soccer. Sometimes like the goalkeeper is going to come out and like. So one one of the players has to make a decision, right? Um, but it, it was a dangerous play, regardless. And so it's just um, it, it's it's a hard it's a hard call for the ref to make. But um, but yeah, he Akira did get kicked in the head, and so like I think you got to call. But, I, I mean, to ask you, but to ask you a question, like let's say in this situation, Akira does get there first, but instead of going to put his hands on the ball, he goes in feet first to tackle the ball clear. And now Belmar makes contact with Akira's shin rather than his head. Is it a red card? All right. So that's the thing. So if there is no absolute change in the situation except the orientation in which Akira comes to him, does that change whether it's a red card or not? Now, I'm not debating whether it's a foul. At the end of the day, it's clumsy play. But clumsy play does not mean red card especially in a situation where if you were to flip it around and he were to go legs first, the ref wouldn't have would, – there's actually risk of Akira getting a call called on him if he had gone legs first to clear yeah, but it. He didn't, though, and that's the thing. You know, you, you kick somebody in the head, it's a pretty easy violent conduct call. Even if it's accidental. You know? I mean, that's true, but we have seen many situations in which, let's say another example, someone goes up for a header alongside someone else, and they collide in the air. No one fouls anyone. But when they go down, in order to stumble to stay on his feet, one of the guys goes all the way down and his head gets clipped by the other player's heel. Is that a red card? That's foot to head. That's technically an inadvertent kick to the head. But this it's was not, not it wouldn't be yeah, called a red dra- card. The dude dragged this his is, foot. This is an advert- <laughs> No, but that's what I'm saying. You say he dragged his foot, then it would have been his tail trailing foot that would have hit it to his head. It was the leading foot. No, it was his leading foot. His right foot was ahead of his left one. His right foot is what connected with Akira's head when his foot was attempting to go over Akira. Right. That, that's why, you know, his, I think his leading point, foot is the that, one that could make contact. Dude, look, let me talk. Uh, so the reason I think, you know, that there was some intent behind it, A, he wasn't tired. He just came on seven minutes beforehand. So he's not, it's not a matter of, you know, being gassed. You know, by any means, uh, you know, he's a veteran player. He's been through the USL ringer for you know eight years or so. Uh, but you know, that that touch, I all the way up to the touch, I'm with you on exactly how the play came in you know, together. You know, he had a step and a half to be able to you know, make a jump, whatever. He takes a stutter step and he drags, you know, the lead foot. If you're looking to be able to jump, you're not dragging that foot. You're planting that foot and you know elevating right there. Yeah, that's one of those where you know, you're trying to you know, get a little you know, cheapy in, and you know, unfortunately, you know, caught a cure square, you know, in the head, in the face. Uh, I, personally, I don't see any way that a cure doesn't have a concussion. You know, you know, through all of this, like I'm glad that you know he got subbed out because I think probably would have been irresponsible for him to keep playing in that scenario. Oh, definitely. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think Billy Forbes is a you know innocent victim. 
in all of this. Uh, he, you know, he had, to me, it looked like he had plenty of time to be able to, you know, jump over him to be able to, you know, kind of, you know, veer wide. And that is a play that you see happen three or four times a game. And the keeper doesn't get kicked in the head any of those other times. And that's at, like every level. I think, I think one thing we can all agree on is that it's very difficult to judge intent, you know, with the way, with how fast the, the game moves. Um, it is, it's is hard to get inside of a player's head in that moment and say, ah, oh, like, cause I, cause I can, I, I honestly can see both, both scenarios. Um, and I'm just like, hopefully Akira is okay within, I mean, I don't know what the minimum concussion kind of protocol is within the league it'd be interesting to maybe do a little back-end research on that one, but hopefully Akira is better sooner than yeah, later. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, that, that, clearly that's, you know, the big takeaway out of all this. Hopefully he's fine. I mean, it, it sucks that happened literally on the other side of the country because, you know, who knows, uh, you know, if that's going to affect his ability to, you know, get back, you know, you know to Richmond, uh, you know, with, you know, travel mm-hmm. and everything. Was, you know, hopefully it was nothing, you know, and they, it was just precautionary, but, you know, otherwise, I don't, luckily I haven't had you know the, the pleasure of going through a concussion. Yeah. Uh, but I got to imagine air travel probably not highly recommended. Uh, you know when your brain's just been rattled. That's good. Yeah. No, I can imagine. Yeah. Good yeah, news. But, uh, to, to be honest with you, I, yeah. I I do feel that if if we were to do if this would have happened last year, I would have been. Very worried, but this year I, I I know that you know Akira. Even with a concussion, I think he 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 should be okay. But we will be okay as well because Palmquist is 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 not that not too far of a step down. You know, if if we were to be in a situation where we'd have to depend on Palmquist for a few games, I think we'd be okay. Exactly, we, we did that and we were fine. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, so thankfully, you know, uh, you know. Will was able to come in, uh, you know, get a, a nice. Well, I guess it was probably more like you know, twenty minutes after all the, you know, added time got you know put back on, at the end of the game. Uh, got, not gonna lie, dude scared me half to death at one point because uh, there's one time where you know the ball's bouncing back to him and he takes a very casual chest trap like right on the goal line. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, dude, like. No, I remember that. One hand like the confidence, other hand, hate the confidence. Use your hands, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> his you know, his distribution looked better. I mean, we only saw we only saw like twenty minutes of it, but his distribution looked pretty good back there. Yeah. And again, that's a that's a testament to Akira itself. Um with Akira being basically a player coach. Um Akira Akira is molding Palm Cliff to take over from him. And to be honest with you, I, I'm, I am not too worried about the future with Palmquist uh, being our goalkeeper. He, 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 he's done a very, very good job when he had to. Yeah, we know, we know Darren believes in him. He you know, speaks very highly you know, of him as well. So, uh, you know, would not be surprised if we uh, – you know, see him starting, uh, you know, on Saturday, you know, against Madison. Uh, but before that, you know, had to get through 12 minutes of stoppage time. Uh, you know, kickers had a couple chances. Like, you know, Belmar had a good look in stoppage time. Uh, you know, Zhao had, you know, a good chance, you know, late that, you know, probably could have made, you know, 3-1. Uh, had, had to suffer through a few corner kicks that, you know, were a little nervy along yeah. the way. Uh, but, you know, all all's well that ends well. Kickers win two one. You know, get out of you know Fresno with uh, the three points, and you know, come back home for a three game homestand. And now, uh, any other overall thoughts on the game, guys? Uh, for um, me, really two halves. You know, first half. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> no, we looked we looked disorganized. We looked sleepy. We did not look great in the first half. Um, I'm not sure what Darren said to those guys uh, that, but whatever he said, it worked in the second half, and it, it, we looked a lot better. Um, you know, Fuego going down to ten men certainly didn't hurt. 
and, and helping us look good. But, um, but yeah, I mean, a tale of two halves, hopefully, hopefully we see more of that second half come out early, you know, on the front end of, the, of some of these games. Yeah. All right. So yeah, what do oh, you have anything else to add there, Shanir? No, no, go ahead. I was no, say, well, I'm going to our top threes because I think that might you know, tell the story a little bit as well. Uh, Shanir, you want to kick us off with our with your top three? Um, I would give my three points to Akira. Just lights out performance in this game. Um, I don't think there's really much he could have done about the goal. So there's not even no no point even discussing that. Um, two points goes to Terzaghi, getting himself back out of kind of a scoring. I wouldn't say a drought, but a, a, a goal recession, I would say. Um, usually when this happens, he goes and he just starts scoring one or two goals per game and he starts going insane. So I'm hoping that happens. So two points for him. And I would give my one point to um, – I, I think I'm going to give my one point to, to, to Hornsby. Because for the first half, the few attacks that we did have came through him. Uh, and he, he was a big part of our forays forward in the first half and even in the second half. Um, he's, he's a very, very good attacking for, uh, left back. And he, he showed out, definitely showed out last night. Gabe, what do you got for us? Um, very similar to you, Shanir, but my three is going to go to Terzaghi, um, uh, scoring a brace hard to, hard to go the other way for me. But my two, of course, is Akira who stood on his head, um, and looked, looked fantastic up to him coming out of the game. Um, and then uh, my one, I'm going to say, uh, I'm also going to say Hornsby because of his distribution and those dangerous crosses that we saw within the first 10 minutes. There was, he did look, he did look dangerous on the front end. Um, and so I, you know, and throughout the game, he looked really dangerous. And then I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give an honorable mention to Gabe Cox, you know, uh, my namesake. Getting his his pro debut, man, good for him. So stoked for for you, Gabe. So, well done. Absolutely, I have the exact same as Shanir. Uh, I think you guys pretty much said all there is to say. Uh, don't look now, you know, Emiliano Trezaghi, three goals in June already. Uh, you know, summer's coming. He's heating up. What did the announcer say? I mean, I think he at this point last year had five goals. So. I don't even know that's accurate because a lot of the other stuff that guy was saying was way off. So <laughs> I'm not trusting his research. Yeah. He, oh my goodness. He, that guy was, he was annoying throughout practically the entire game. He did not. I, I don't think he needs to be commentating any games anymore. <laughs> well, you can call the games. It's just his you know, research and you know, his prep needs, needs a little bit of work on it. Yeah. Okay, he 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 needs he needs a color commentator partner. <laughs> yeah, well, he needs someone else to do all the color comment. He 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 needs someone else to do the color commentary for him. <laughs> I can get down with that. I can get down with that. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, start to wrap things up here. Uh, you know, thirteen games into the season, kickers have played the most you know games in the league at this point now. Uh, but we're sitting third place, twenty points, two points off of. Uh, first at this point, uh, North Carolina and Charlotte, you know, both played one game fewer, or, you know, but solidly in a playoff position you know, right now. And with, you know, homestand you know, coming up, you know, Madison first, Knoxville, and then who's the third one? All right. Just had this up too. Who's. It's going to be Chattanooga again. Chattanooga already again. Yeah. yeah so and those are games where, you know, I think, Madison will be tough, you know, coming up on you know, uh, you know, Saturday, uh, you know, the Henry Derby, if you're, uh, you know, our announcer friend. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, gosh, that was so cringe. <laughs> they, they've been a weird team. You know, they're getting beat by the absolute dregs of the league, and then they, you know, but they've, you know, just slapped North Carolina around twice. You know, so uh, it should be a good one coming up 
on Saturday at Seven City Stadium. Uh, got any thoughts heading into that game, guys? I, I'm with you. Uh, I mean, Madison. Madison looks looks like an odd team. They look they look dangerous. Um, I mean, we know what Stephen Payne can do, and he plays for them uh, in the same position, right outside back. You know, um, it'll be fun to mess with him a little bit on his on his return back to City Stadium. But um, yeah, man. I mean, we're gonna be at home, so I'm I'm expecting a win. Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a win. Um, you, you, when it comes to Darby, you can't really look at form too much. Um, and this is probably the only Darby in the league that is actually legitimate because the rest are just – they attempt to fabricate them. Um, I think um, – I think we should we should be able to pull off a win, especially coming off of off of um, this weekend, where um, we're looking at a, a, a very solid performance uh, right off the bat uh, in the second half. And, and if we can continue that vein of form that we had in the second half of this game against Central Valley, then we should be able to uh, put Ford Madison to the sword. Yeah. You know, it'll be a good one. They, they're always close games when we play those guys. Uh, I have no idea if, you know, any of their, you know, traveling circus crew are going to come or if there's going to be, you know, cosplaying, you know, you know folks from you know, North Carolina or whatever pretending to be, you know, Madison fans again. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, you know, but, yeah. Based on what we've seen all year so far, you know, it's going to be a packed house. It's going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, nice and rowdy. Uh, you know, holiday weekend, you know, we've got, you know, Juneteenth, you know, on Monday. So I won't say for everybody, for those of us, you know, you know, working for, you know, the government in any way, we're getting Monday off. So, you know, get out there, have a good time. Yeah. I, I, I want to expand a little bit on something you had just said too. We're, we're solidly in a playoff position. Um, even, even having played one more game uh, than, than every or one or two more games than everybody else. Um, we're sitting at uh, 1.53 points per game, um, which is, you know, very well on pace to uh, even a home playoff game. So um, I like where we're at. I think we're, I think we're, we're solid. We're looking good. Um, I'm hopeful for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you know, you know, home games are, you know, I think where this team can really be able to, you know, lock in. Uh, we've played a lot of games. You played a lot more on the road than at home so far. It's been a, you know, five home games, eight road games split. So, like I said, three game homestand coming up. Uh, and, you know, to add on to that, you know, the team announced, you know, uh, what was it, midweek? You know, that one more home game, you know, coming in, you know, uh, I believe July 18th, playing uh, Communicaciones, you know, Guatemala. So the return of the international friendly. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, eh. I guess we're going to see a lot of a lot of the players that really haven't had a lot of uh, game time. Hopefully, they will get some minutes um, because I would much rather than play um, rather than wearing our cho- first choice players out too much. Yeah, it, it is that that's the game right week between oh, Charlotte. And North- I was going to say it's tucked between Charlotte. Uh, at home in Northern Colorado away, so yeah, More yeah. Time. No, I, I think to be honest with you, I think that would be a good game to experiment with Bentley as the nine. Could be. I'd like to see that. Yeah. I I would also like to add that while Comunicaciones is not necessarily the same draw as like a European, like a top European club. Um, the draw for this game will most likely be atmosphere uh, in the stadium. Yeah. Um, in Richmond, we have a very high Guatemalan, El Salvadorian, Honduran population. Um, and I don't know how many of our listeners would, would even be aware of this, but I'm pretty sure Comunicaciones played against a Honduran team at City Stadium last year. Um, and it was the stadium was packed. 
Um, and it, I, I talked to a couple of the vendors the weekend after that game last year. They said it was wild. They had like fireworks. I mean, it was it was insane. And so um, I think the draw for this game in particular will be atmosphere. I think you'll you'll have easily a sellout, um, particularly a lot of Comunicaciones fans who, who probably live here in Richmond um, will be there and make it even louder than it normally would be. Absolutely, absolutely. My biggest concern is that game might feel like an away game for our for our boys. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about it more as we get closer to time. Uh, but you guys, any last thoughts before we sign off here? You know, today. Back City Stadium. Um, yes, it's the Henny Derby. We need to get that trophy back. I mean, we got we got the better one last year. Uh, but yeah, we got the better one last year. But I I I want that I want that bottle of Henny. I want that bottle of Henny. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I would just want to win anyway, so I'm on board there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, uh, good win. You know, hopefully, you know, Akira, you know, is fine or is you know going to be a quick recovery. Uh, and you know, look yeah. forward to seeing everybody out there at City Stadium. You know, on Saturday, uh, you know, start to get into you know, the summer months. You know, everybody uh, hydrate up, whichever way you prefer to hydrate when you're at the game. So, uh, guys, appreciate you being here, uh, you know, helping me out as I'm going through, you know, trying to figure out how to do all the tech stuff, you know, for this. Maybe people will hear it. Who knows? Uh, but <laughs> we will uh, catch you all next time, you know, after uh, the Madison game this weekend. Take it easy, y'all.